Both the Dow and the Standard & Poor's 500 soar to record highs today. Investors ignore a plunge in the Chinese stock market and find direction in the minutes of the last Fed meeting. The World Bank may soon have a new leader. President Bush named Robert Zolich to head the poverty-fighting organization. We'll look at the challenges he faces in his new job. Tonight's Street Critique guest has a stock that specializes in cleaning up. That could help your portfolio clean up. He's Patrick O'Hare, editor-in-chief of the financial education website, briefing.com. And Japan begins catering to a new market, the ultra-rich. See how living in the lap of luxury is making a splash. I'm Paul Kangas. And I'm Suzanne Pratt. Susie Garib is off tonight. This is Nightly Business Report for Wednesday, May 30th. Nightly Business Report is made possible by... A.G. Edwards. Objective Financial... From viewers like you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. A record day on Wall Street. The S&P 500 index closed at an all-time high for the first time in seven years, up 12 points to 1530. The Dow also finished at a new high, surging 111 points to 12,633. Today's gains came after investors ignored a steep overnight sell-off in Shanghai, focusing instead on the release of the minutes from the Federal Reserve's May 9th policy meeting. The minutes show the Fed is optimistic about the outlook for the economy, despite the lingering housing slump and inflation. Economists say that means the central bank isn't likely to lower interest rates anytime soon. Doug Sandler, chief equity strategist at Wachovia Securities, says the Fed minutes had a mixed message for Wall Street. Something for the bulls in the Fed statement. There's something for the bears. Uh, I think we're in a market that's trending up, so the bulls are going to tend to win this tug of war. Uh, ultimately, I think it is very, you know, it's a good thing that the pullback that we had last week was short and shallow, and the bad news that came out this morning on China was quickly shrugged off. By the way, the last time the Dow and S&P 500 hit record highs on the same day was back on December 31st of 1999. President Bush opened a new chapter for the World Bank today. Mr. Bush named former Deputy Secretary of State Robert Zellig to replace Paul Wolfowitz as World Bank President. Wolfowitz stepped down a minute open lower, partly due to that overnight sell-off in the Shanghai market. The Dow fell just 40 points, however, and the Nasdaq lost just nine in the early going. That resistance to selling bolstered bullish conviction, so by midday the Dow snapped back with a 35-point gain and the Nasdaq was up four. After a brief dip, stocks rallied sharply on that release of minutes from the May Federal Reserve meeting. The Dow Industrial Average jumped 111.74 points to a new record high of 13,633.08. The Nasdaq Composite rose 20.53, ending at 2592.59, while the Standard & Poor's 500 finally closed at a record high up 12.12 at 1530.23. Over the bond market, the 10-year note climbed 4.30 seconds to 97 and 3.30 seconds, putting the yield at 4.87 percent. Four current and former partners at the accounting giant Ernst & Young were charged today in a tax fraud conspiracy case. Stocks in the news tonight as well. Big board volume leader on 16.5 million shares, Pfizer losing 15 cents, followed by EMC with a 52 cent gain. MEMC Electronics up $1.01. First Data Corp edged up 13 cents. This company's in the process of being acquired by Kohlberg Kravis Roberts for $34 a share. Exxon Mobil was up $1.38. Nice move there. General Electric, 33 cent gain. Time Warner edged up 11 cents. AT&T, 49 cent advance. Sprint Nextel rose 70 cents. And Kraft Foods was up 18 cents. Dow Jones and Company gained a dollar two. The Financial Times of London reports T. Rowe Price, the largest shareholder outside of the Bancroft family, with 15% of the stock, finds the News Corp's $60 a share buyout bid fairly attractive. 
Pennsylvania real estate up $3.19 on takeover speculation there. Yesterday, the REITs were very strong after Archstone Smith accepted a $60.75 buyout bid from Tishman Spire. And today, that whole group, very strong again today. Look at that, five of them, all nice gainers, especially after uh, Deutsche Bank upgraded these particular five from neutral to buy. Good gains. Phillips Van Heusen had a good day, up $4.27. First quarter earnings moved up to $0.92 cents from $0.74 cents a year ago, $0.06 cents better than expected. Revenues up 17 percent. Company boosted its 2007 earnings guidance, and Bank America repeated a buy and boosted its target price to $68 a share. A lot of good news there. Marathon Oil up $3.21. This company plans to boost its stock buyback program by $500 million. And speaking of that, Eon, this is the big German utility. It's going to buy back $9.4 billion of its stock by the end of 2008. It also plans a 20% annual dividend boost until the year 2010. Western Refining moving up $2.97 on news that a court has denied the Federal Trade Commission's attempt to block the company's acquisition of Giant Industries. Giant stock edged up just 15 cents on the news. Nine Source Holding Company down $1.87. The company ended talks to sell its Indiana electricity assets. And Donaldson Company, which makes filtration systems, had higher third quarter earnings of 49 cents, up from 43 a year ago, but it cut the high end full year earnings target, and that hurt the stock. NASDAQ's most active, Apple, up $4.42, as you heard. It launched its iTunes uh, Plus product. And in addition, WR Hambrick Brokerage boosted its target by $10 to $125 for the stock. Morgan Stanley's target now is $150 a share. Google up $11.49. Microsoft, 32 cent gain. There you see it. Cisco moved up 49 cents. Qualcomm down $1.32. Intel lost 22 cents. CDW Corp up $2.06. Uh, the company will be acquired by Madison Dearborn Partners for $87.75 a share. Biogen IDEC moving up $2.92. The company began a touch tender offer for 57 million shares of its own stock. That's 16 percent of the outstanding, and the price will be between $47 and $53 a share. Research in Motion down 67 cents. Amazon.com edged 23 cents higher. And finally, Nova Sea has soared nearly $7 on news. Shearing Plow has agreed to pay up to $440 million for the rights to develop Nova Sea's experimental prostate cancer treatment. My street critique guest tonight writes the bargain hunting column on the financial education website, briefing.com. And he's seeing new life in a big distributor of maintenance and janitorial products. He's Patrick O'Hare. And Pat, welcome back to Nightly Business Report. Thank you, Paul. It's a pleasure to be back. Well, the last time we spoke, you were seeing value in a stock called Bed Bath & Beyond. That was May 9th. The stock was around 41. Your line, uh, given it NBC News, Avon, <laughs> Ohio. When nightly news continues in just a moment, we receive some potential good news today. It has to do with the plight of those wayward California whales.